Welcome back to Boring Reviews. Boring Land. Oh, Come just on. kidding. Blasphemer. Oh, Hello, my. Boring Review Nation. Kind of pointless. We know all things. All right. Welcome back to Boring Reviews. Nick here. Joey there. And we are here for our weekly. Almost forgot to say it. <laughs> Geography Now video that we get so excited for. We always start off our recording sessions with this video because we are ready to learn, my friends. And which one are we going to learn to... Look at eating a sandwich. Which one are we going to learn today? Greece. I thought we were going to learn, but we're going to learn more about, about Greece. Yes, our um, our oldest really wants to go to Italy and Greece. And he thinks he a cruise everywhere. would be the best way to visit Italy and Greece. So it's only appropriate we're on that we watch. The western Greece. side of the United States, so maybe not the most convenient. How well, to get a jump? Fly out to a country out there for the cruise. I'm just saying. Obviously. Obviously. A snake. But we are yes, we're gonna check out Greece. Greece has such an influence around the world, and it has for such a long time. Especially on our language for crying out loud, we talk about Greek and Latin root words in fourth grade every single year. And it's just, it's crazy the influence that Greece has. So I'm excited to learn about it. Oddly enough, and because I can't help myself, I'm going to start the video with taking off a lot of people from Greece. Greek food's not my favorite. I'm not going to lie. I've tried it maybe half a dozen times. I get that's not a lot. You're probably like, what? And I haven't tried everything, obviously, but I, uh, I'm i still working on it. Do you like Greek food? I, I get what you mean. I love a Greek salad, but I don't know if that's American or not. <laughs> I'm just saying. I love I the like Greek the salad. No, um but yeah, we've gone to a few Greek uh, restaurants, and I think and it's the again they're meat. by Americanized or yes, modernized, they're totally or whatever Americanized. you want to call that. It's just the meat in it is not my favorite. Well, and we don't like lamb, so that's kind of like it. that. I think that's it. Not that everything is lamb, but this or that. But it, anyways, sorry for that. Can't help myself. I'm trying to be honest there. Let us know the reason why I say that. Let us know what is the best kind of Greek. Food. Like if you're like okay, if you don't like Greek food, that's fine. But make sure you at least try this, this, and this mm -hmm. before you really make your final decision. Let us know. Would love to try it out. But we're gonna go ahead and check this out as we do. If you like anything we say after what I said before, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. I just gotta make sure I have these on the right side to my ears. It's good for us to be honest, you know, but you know, sometimes. Well, today I had some really yummy French food. I'm just saying. I had some very yummy cereal. <laughs> Here we go. Mm. That was the a one big that fight. I want. You're yeah, the one that I want. Ooh, 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 you're the one that I want. You get my reference, right? You get it. Yes, I'm Greece. so clever, right? Do you get my <laughs> reference? <laughs> As I, just don't know why you're, I just don't know why you're holding napkin and singing to that, not the sandwich. Because it's all greasy? Greece is sometimes yes. seen as like the cradle and birthplace oh. of European civilization and thought. Triple meaning. So much Love of it. everything you see today has some kind of correlation to I was Greece. Thinking a song Pretty happy for a relatively Greece. small mm -hmm. country in the Balkans, eh? Now let's find out how it all went down. I love the documentary about Greece. So let's just jump Greece. into it. Um, Greece is located plus. in the southernmost part of the Balkan Peninsula that stretches into the Ionian, Mediterranean, like and Aegean Seas, bordered by four countries in the north and east. The country is divided into 13 regions, one autonomous state that we'll talk about later, and the capital Ooh. Athens, one of the oldest capitals in the world where nearly 40% of the entire population lives. Now, despite it's the crazy. administrative makeup, Greece is generally divided into nine geographic regions. Thrace, Macedonia, not to be confused with this place that we already talked about, Thessaly, Epirus, Central just Greece, say. the Ionian Islands, the Aegean islands and crete as you can probably tell from its makeup greece is one of if not probably the most seafaring marine emphasized countries in the world i mean they do have the world's largest merchant marine fleet after japan and at any given point wow. in greece you are no more Seriously. than 85 miles or 100 miles it's surrounded by so much water it makes sense greece yeah. has over 2,000 islands only about 220 of which are inhabited and about 4,000 extra islets keys and sea rocks even the ones 4, that are like right off the coast of turkey in fact the only two significant islands belonging to turkey in the aegean are imbros or kanachale and tenedos or Botsjada. Now, keep in mind, the Peloponnesian Peninsula is not an island. It's actually just barely connected by the Corinthian Isthmus in the city of Corinth, wow. which has a huge canal going through it. Wow. After independence from the Ottoman times, Greece was very intent on making sure they kept everything in the Aegean. This has historically led to some controversy from Turkey in regards to things like the delimitation of territorial waters, airspace, the executive economic zone, and the militarization of some of the islands. Nonetheless, they've been able to work stuff out 
kind of, but some things are still left in a gray zone with the only land dispute they have over these two small scraps of land, the Imiya or Kardak Island. Finally, let's talk about the one autonomous I don't get it, just let him have See it. this little guy right here? The Gotta third finger on the weird monster claw looking peninsula? Well, that peninsula is called Halkidiki <laughs> and the third finger is Mount Athos. With a population of only about 2,000, Mount Athos or Holy Mountain is interesting yes. because it's that an is isolated so cool. monastic state completely run by monks and priests. Getting in is a little tough. The number of daily visitors is restricted. You have to have a special permit and you have to be a dude. No women allowed. Although historically, some women have either accidentally or intentionally got in, including this no former Greek way. pageant winner. She dressed up as a man and snuck in. The three largest cities are, of course, Athens, the capital, Thessaloniki, and Patras. However, the three largest and busiest airports are Athens, Heracleion on Crete, and then Thessaloniki coming in at third. Speaking of Crete, each inhabited island in Greece kind of has its own charm. Of course, there are too many things to list, but a few to consider might be things like Corfu being the most family friendly island. Delos is known for being the legendary birthplace of Apollo. Skyros and Hydra are kind of like the quiet islands where more people use mules than cars. Rhodes once held the wow. Colossus, one of the seven wonders of the ancient oh, world. Geez. Cardia once tried to become its own country at one point in time. Naxos and Paros are known for being the windy islands, great for sailing and water sports. Santorini with its ridiculous wow. picturesque cliffside white I want to visit Santorini. Just said picturesque and I was thinking about that. Mm -hmm. religious site in which Jesus' disciple John was exiled and wrote the book of Revelation. Okay. Speaking of which, Greece has more archaeological sites per capita than any other country in the world, only ranks wow. behind a few other countries like Turkey and Mexico in terms of overall sites. Now, we all know Greece is a tourist hotspot. Wow, like Mexico. France, more tourists than the Just entire population of the Greece concept. visit Greece every single year. Now, we all know about the Acropolis and the Parthenon, but other cool sites that stick out include the Meteora Pillar Cliff Monasteries, the Necromantion of Ephyra, the Oracle of Delphi, St. Theodora's Chapel with 17 oak trees sprouting with no visible evidence of roots, the sculpted face on the shore of Nisi, the Chios former leper okay. colony buildings, the Palace of the Grand Master of the Knights of Rhodes, and of course, hundreds and hundreds of other sites. There are too many to list, and if you know of any, please write them down in the comments below and share. In the meantime, we gotta get down to the foundations of the country, the land. The land. Now, there's an old Greek saying, when God made the world, he took the leftover rocks, threw them behind his shoulder, and that's how Greece was made. I, I kind of paraphrase that a little bit, don't quote me on it. Too late, it's a quote now. <laughs> now, Greece is funny because land-wise, they don't That's exactly funny. score high on the soil performance index, and overland transportation has always Apparently been an issue. Knows. But when you pretty much dominate the maritime trading sector, you can kind of turn a semi-arid rock zone into a flourishing agrarian hub. And wait till we get to the Israel episode. They've done quite an interesting I can't job. believe you spend so much money on business people. The on the West Bank. Bank. I don't care what the West the Bank. Talk about me. Talk about the rock. First of all, the country's about 80% mountainous <laughs> on both the mainland Balkan region and the islands. Two main mountain chains form along the Balkan mainland. The Pindus in the West. Yeah. The Rodopes in the North. The Disney Plus kind of talked about right that. Right around the area where how Thessaly they meets Macedonia, started. you find Mount Olympus, the tallest mountain in Greece, notable for being the legendary home of the ancient Greek gods. Now, with the exception of small boats and canoes, almost all the rivers in Greece are non navigable as they are too shallow. Nonetheless, the largest <laughs> river, Aliakmonos, flows through the Pindus Range and eventually empties into the Thermaic Gulf right by the Monster Claw. Yeah. Also, Trihonida, the largest lake, can be found in the south central Greek region. Beautiful, right? Well, it comes at a cost. Greece is one of the most seismically active countries in the world oh, as it wow. lies on two major tectonic plate zones, the North Anatolian mm. Fault and the Hellenic Trench. This means that although frequent, earthquakes in Greece are relatively mild because they usually have epicenters that are in the sea. Or, you know, Turkey just kind of takes the biggest hit. Greece gets about 250 oh, days of pure sunshine a year. 7% of the world's marble mines are found in Greece. And they're also the third largest olive oil producer. Speaking of which, if you've never had yeah. Greek food, you are not allowed sense. to die until you do. Popular dishes like moussaka, spanakopita, the classic that looks yummy. Salad, pita, okay, pitos, that's what I love. Real kind, not that cheap, sleazy stuff down on 14th Street in which half the meat is made of cornmeal. Nonetheless, agriculture only makes up about 4% of their economic I'm output. Real Most kind, of the revenue sure. and over 80% comes from tourism and service jobs. Otherwise, some notable spots in Ooh, nature would be beautiful. places like the Vikos Gorge, the Sami Cave in Cephalonia, the Siri E. Kalter Blue Eyed Spring, Volcanic Rocks of Lemnos, Neda Waterfalls, Tozar Hot Springs, and so much more. In a nutshell, Greece is like a rocky, rugged, seafaring realm of merchandise and ships and olives. Could have said that like three minutes ago and skipped this whole segment. Well, on to the next. <laughs> I love this. Winston Churchill once said, Greeks there. don't fight like heroes. Heroes fight humor. like Greeks. Okay. First of all, Greece has about 11 million people and has one of the highest aging populations in Europe. The vast majority of the country, at about 93%, are made up of ethnic Greeks, and the remaining 7% are mostly made up of other groups like Albanians, Gypsies, and Turks. 93% Greeks? They use the CNF plug crazy. outlets, they use the euro as their currency, although prior to the euro, they used the drachma, which was the oldest consistently used currency in the world, and they drive on the right <laughs> side of the road. Now, pretty much anyone that has ever been to school at around age 12 will know how much Greek history has played a role in the Western world. The history is too long to explain it in detail, but in the quickest way, 
way I can put this. Minoans, Mycenaeans, tribes and city-states fighting against Persians at Thermopylae, which is where Gerard Butler came in and did this. Alexander the Great ushered in the Macedonian Empire. <coughs> Dude, he was what? Greek. No, he no, was yes, not Greek. He, yes, he, he was. was. Never Greek. How many times? Then there was classical Greece, Roman <laughs> Greece, Byzantine Greece, Ottoman Greece, oh, and then finally a revolution led by this guy in 1821 that started the modern version of Greece that we have today. Thanks to Alexander the Great, multiple regions on three continents experienced some form of Hellenization or the influence of Greek culture and language, and it went all the way down into the Byzantine era. This means at one point in time, even black Africans were speaking Greek, or at least the ancient Koine Greek language. It became so widespread that today almost every language in Europe invokes some kind of Greek origin in certain vocabulary. For example, in English, we have academy, telephone, grammar, and even geography. Not only that, but Greek has in one way or another been spoken That's for true. over 3,000 years, making it possibly the oldest consistently spoken and written language in the world. And eh, the Shang Dynasty. And eh, moving on. We could go on and on talking about Greece's <laughs> explosively fascinating ancient history enshrined with legend, myth, wars, warriors, trade, alliances, gods, beasts, Sparta, sculpture, arts, leaders, philosophers, games, and interesting clothing options. Well, that'll take too long, and we gotta get through this episode. About 90% of the people in Greece adhere to Christianity, mostly in the Eastern Orthodox branch, just like I'm many surprised. other countries in the Slavic world. If you've ever met a Greek person, you'll know that most of them definitely have a unique way of carrying themselves. Many of you Greek geographies, or as I like to call you, geogra Greeks, have told me that the movie My Big Fat Greek Wedding is actually kind of a pretty accurate representation of a typical Greek family upbringing. A little exaggerated, but nonetheless not far off. Big families with strong opinionated parents that you do not talk back to. There's always like a weird grandma mumbling something about the Turks, and one of the cousins is probably lighting something on fire as your brother is getting into a fight. But when grandma brings in the souvlaki and moussaka, everyone sits down and it's like a beautiful warm Norman Rockwell painting. At least that's the picture you Geogra Greeks have painted for me. I don't know, how was that? Was that in the ballpark? So anyway, in Greece, voting is required by law, as is conscription for men ages wow. 16, yeah, that's right, 16, they get them while they're young, up to 45 Jeez. for a minimum of nine months in service. Many people celebrate Jeez. name day instead of their birthdays, in which they have a party on the day that pertains that's to the patron saint that they got their name from. Land is kind of limited, so to save space, many of the dead have their bodies exhumed after five years of being buried, and then the bones are washed in wine and then placed in an ossuary. Retirement homes are incredibly rare as most Greek grandparents oh, typically end up living in their children's homes. Traditional music can be found everywhere. You'll probably hear a lot of lutes, mandolins, and tambourines. Traditional dances are alive and well. They all usually incorporate some kind of group number with fast-paced movements and jumpy actions. Oh, and old guys smoking while playing backgammon. There's always old guys smoking and playing backgammon. Avoid the offensive mutsa hands. And just like we studied in the Estonia episode, Greece has an influx of women. Like, a lot. Somewhere around 60-65% of the population is female. This may or may not be the reason why Greece is Absolutely. also the world's most... How can I put this in a non-crude and vulgar phrasing for our children viewers? Uh, Greece is the most hey hey active country in the world. They even beat Brazil. Brazil. Interestingly enough, Greece also has the lowest divorce rate in the EU as well. Speaking of that, okay, let's talk about some numbers. Brutal, brutal, sometimes image tarnishing numbers. Let's just address the elephant in the room and get it over with, okay? Yes, Greece is in a little bit of an economic pickle right now. Basically, in a nutshell, said, back in 2001, really Greece struggling. joined the EU. Long story short, they misrepresented their financial statements. They entered an oh, IMF man. and ECB memorandum. And now the current generation is paying for all the fiscally irresponsible actions the previous one made with things like hiked taxes as well as salary and pension cuts. You know, son, back in my day. Yeah, back in your day, you ruined my day. Greece also has the highest unemployment rate in the EU as well, with nearly a quarter of the population seeking jobs. Nonetheless, as depressing as that sounds, Greece actually, interestingly enough, has the lowest suicide rate in the EU. Good. Now, before we move on, here are some rapid fire notable contributions Greece has made to the world. Inventions like the water mill, alarm clocks, lighthouses, the crane, construction levers, catapults, a crude steam engine, central heating, and technically the first robot. Concepts like citizenship, early democracy, atom theory, various fields of mathematics like geometry, advancements in disease study and medicine, philosophy, theater, dynamic sculpture and art, written history, trial by jury, and of course, the Olympics. Notable Greeks would probably include Eratosthenes, Leonidas, Pericles, Homer, Plutarch, Euripides, Pythagoras, Euclid, Archimedes, and Apollonius, Herodotus, and also... Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Alexander no, the Great. No! No! Yes! Yes! No. I'm gonna he say is not he Greek. is Greek! Yes, he, he is! is. Modern contemporaries like Konstantinos Karathiodori, who I taught didn't know Einstein, there was a whole... singer Nana Muscovi, yes, the Duke of Edinburgh, Drama Prince Philip. Yep, that. he's actually half Greek. Tommy Lee, wow. Yanni, soccer players, Giorgio Samaras, Tommy Giorgios Lee. Karayunis, Konstantinos Mitroglu, this crazy guy who ran like a thousand miles in 11 days, Queen Sophia of Spain, and of course, America's Greek sweetheart, John Stamos. Don't even try to get on this list. Okay, friend time. <laughs> 
Greece is really old, like, <laughs> whoa, really old. They've planted so many shifting diplomatic ties throughout the millennia that it's ridiculous. In a nutshell, though, they generally get along pretty well with other Orthodox countries, mostly in Eastern Europe, as theology and doctrine have always tied them in one way or another. Of those Orthodox countries, Serbia is probably hands down the closest childhood friend. Serbians are like the next door neighbor that they nice grew hat. up with asking if Greece could come out and play ball. Nonetheless, you don't have to be Orthodox to roll with Greece. Greeks love the Spanish and Italians almost as much. Each country shares a similar Mediterranean and seafood culture that has historically tied them for thousands of years, although each claim that they have the best olive oil. Greeks have even adopted certain Italian words in their vernacular like una fazza, una razza, one face, one race. And as mentioned before, Armenia is kind of like the exotic apostolic girlfriend they've been dating since like the 3rd century AD. Turkey is kind of like the whole Japan-South Korea thing in which historically they've had a lot of drama because, you know, Ottoman times, but they love to visit and piggyback off of each other's cultures. Today, there is virtually no tension between everyday citizens, they've moved on, mostly, and sometimes it's even hard to distinguish a Greek person from a Turk just by looking at them. But make sure you do not make the mistake of mislabeling them. That's a huge no-no. When it comes to their best friend, though, almost every Geogra Greek told me Cyprus. Many Greeks don't even really see Cyprus as a Good separate country, but rather just an extension of Greece. They love their little brothers with funny accents and would do anything for them. In conclusion, modern-day Greece may only make up about 132,000 square kilometers, but has been the standard source of inspiration for so much of the Western world. The fact is, today, you can look around and see how much of our modern society has been in some way, shape, or form molded by something Greek. Kudos to you, Greece. And by the way, kudos is a Greek word. Stay tuned. Grenada <laughs> is coming up next. Okay, so first of all, I had no idea Cyprus was a country. <laughs> Just going to say. Um, now I've forgotten the town. Um, starts with an S. Sar Sarant? No. Oh my gosh, what's the place that has like the tradition? Like when people think of Greece, they think of this city with the white buildings and the blue doors and the blue shutters. Sorrentoni. Nah, you're making us both look dumb. Oh my no idea. gosh, I know. I don't know why I can't think of it what now. What about that place? But it's just, it's the place that like I want to go visit. Like yeah. after watching that, like I'm, I'm on board of Jackson. I, I want to go on a cruise to Italy and Greece. Oh, she sold. I'm sold. How many travel tickets have you sold, Geography? Now, <laughs> speaking of things I don't know, I always thought Mount Olympus was made up for mythology. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was actually a mountain. I mean, maybe at one point I did, but I watched so many movies um, and hang around <laughs> Fort Gutters all day. <laughs> okay. You just admitted that and you're going to get the comments. Uh, you are going to get... I could Those dumb less. Americans, how can they be teachers? I could care less, right? Well, luckily for me, the, the placement test to qualify for being a teacher did not ask is true or false. <laughs> Mount Olympus is only a mythology. It's true. Like you... You specialize in your area, and if your area is not geography, then you're not going to know a lot about it. Jeez. That is not my area. But I, I learned that, so there you go. Yeah. I really like this one, not just because of the Greeks. I mean, obviously, because of that, it's, it's fascinating to learn about a country that you've heard about ever since you were yay tall, even though you didn't hear about Mount Olympus. But the thing about this is I love the writing. Like, there was a lot of comedic mm -hmm. elements. Not that there's not always with his uh, personality, but there was a lot like intentionally planned in there. And I liked how they, I don't know if there's a lot of animosity. He said there's not really right now between Turkey and, or even the Macedonia, the Alexander Great and whatnot, but they, they really played it nicely and they made it a very, very fun episode. And it was short and quick. It didn't feel awkward or uncomfortable. Like, oh, this is going on too long. Yeah, it was yeah, great. So it, was great. it was perfectly fun. Yeah, I mean, he went over, I would have wanted to hear more about the food because you hear so yes, much about Greek yes. food. And it's funny that he had mentioned, like, you can't die until you try Greek fruit, Greek food. Um, but I haven't tried what well, those first two things were and the things that were mentioned in the My Feet, My Big Fat Greek Wedding. Mm -hmm. They look maybe like desserts. I'm not exactly sure. I have not tried that before. So maybe, and I'm a sucker for desserts, so you never know. But it's just, it's crazy. As I watch these episodes, and he talks about it being a rocky place, a lot of water, all this kind of stuff, limited land. I think, like, how can certain places get so influential as other places? And I know you have, like, the Greek Empire and all that kind of stuff. And, and then, you know, other empires or whatever. And you had great thinkers, right? And maybe those thinkers were, like, rock stars, and that's what helped with the influence. But, I mean, from one area, you get so much influence, things that we still yeah. use today. I don't want to get confused because I saw the documentary a while ago and then I watched Rome after and I'm re-watching the Rome one with our son. Um, so I, I don't want to like misspeak because I've seen a lot of different documentaries. But if I remember it, Disney Plus has 
they had like National Geographic's and a plethora of like wonderful documentaries. But they did talk about the lands like not being good for like agriculture and not really being like the best of the best but how they were just really smart and resource resourceful and like they were able to like just kind of go out and trade and get what they needed and just that it was good thinkers social butterflies it was good thinkers and they were strong and they just kind of took over i want to say they did a lot with the water but that could have been the romans too we should go visit that like, one island that you're not allowed to go to I know. Well, I didn't realize how many little islands and rocks and stuff like were really surrounding Greece. God, I like, just do the leftover rocks. Just, just seriously, I kind of like that theory though. But looking at that, I was like, man, you'd have to be. I mean, I'm sure like when you're and they're they're spread out wide. They're not like they are on the map. But if you're like on a boat, you've got to be mindful of where you're at. You know, it's not like a little thing like, oh, I'm just gonna. If so you have someone on the front of the boat, me like rock. Rock. no no We're not good. that i just mean like as you're going like you've got to be really mindful you can't just kind of let yourself float around for a minute a few minutes or that's so that's why you have anchoring. a great phrase look where you leap look before you leap something like that my goodness gracious i'm just <laughs> scoring out the charts you're really today. really feeling it on that note thank you so much for watching our video let us know what you think about our reaction to this and the video itself don't forget to check out geography now don't forget to like and subscribe and until next time goodbye